Hi, I'm CJ Elmerig with TransWest Truck Trailer V in Frederick, Colorado. We've got a really cool trailer sitting behind me. If you are in the market for maybe something that you need to use on the farm and ranch, haul some pears, haul some maybe wean calves, some bulls, anything like that, but then also have uh, a trailer and a need for a trailer to go to actually go to a show, throw some show heifers, some steers, something like that on a trailer. This is a really versatile trailer and this will fit those needs. So. This is a brand new 2024 Cimarron Lone Star, and this is a dirty tack setup is what we call it. So before I start really walking you through this, let's go ahead and take a look at the drawing so I can show you how it's laid out. So we're 24 foot on the floor, eight foot wide. We're six foot tall on this one here. Um, and what we have is, again, it's a dirty tack setup. So with this one, We'll get into that in a second. I'll kind of show you a couple other things we've done to this trailer. First and foremost, all aluminum construction on a Cimarron. You have an eight year structure warranty, three year hardware warranty, one year no questions asked warranty on tires. We'll talk about that a little bit more. When we first walk up to this trailer, we'll look dead on at it and you'll notice this has the V nose. So it's not the standard tapered nose. This is actually their V nose set up here. Um, so it, you have to remember this is eight wide, so it's wider than standard, so you're gonna have a little bit more drag when you're actually pulling it behind your truck. These V-Nose trailers pull phenomenally well. And what I also like is Cimarron doesn't bring theirs to a very abrupt point. Um, they do put a good radius on it. Uh, with that, you're actually gonna have a little bit more width to the actual uh, storage area up in this nose that we'll show you when we get in the inside. But again, everybody just raves about how well these pull. If you don't need that extra storage space in the neck, this is definitely an option worth looking at. We build quite a few of these trailers. This is a low pro trailer, but a lot of our tall trailers, our big warm blood horse trailers, when we're getting into those 7.7, seven, 7.10, seven, seven, eight one tall trailers, a lot of these will build with this V-nose just to make them pull that much better. B&W coupler, so this is designed by B&W. Granted, this is not a big trailer. This really comes into play when we start talking about our, you know, larger trailers that are gonna be maybe uh, being pulled with a hauler, something along those lines. Um, but this is about the third generation coupler that B&W is designed for Cimarron. Um, it actually just kind of naturally happened. Cimarron went to visit B&W's plant to look at some other stuff. While they were there, they got talking about couplers. The supplier that Cimarron was using at that time got bought out. So it was hard to get some couplers for a while. So B&W said, hey, we'll design one for you. This is about the third generation. This is absolutely my favorite. Obviously, if you have multiple generations, you're trying to tweak them and make them better. And this one really hit it because we went with the lower profile handle on this one, which allowed one more hole to be drilled into this, which again, when we really get in those haulers, when we have those bigger um, trucks and we want the trailer to run level, we need this, this actual coupler to slide farther up into the sleeve, and this allows us to do that. But it's nice to have uh, a, a company like B&W, American-owned, American-made uh, to work with. That's rated at 25,000 pounds right there. Um, obviously, this trailer is not big enough to even get close to that. But underneath the gooseneck, we went ahead and we put a, a electric over hydraulic jack on this one. I mean, granted, it's a 24-footer, it's eight wide, it's not a massive trailer by any means, but who wants to hand crank these guys? This is really nice, because now we can push a button, and up and down it goes. It does have the manual override, so in emergency situations, we could get it on or off the truck. With it, you're gonna get the aluminum battery box. It's gonna house that 12-volt battery, and then you're gonna have a battery disconnect as well. So. If we park this trailer, like right now, we've got the interior lights running, we're running off the battery. Um, if I accidentally leave a light on, well, it's gonna drain the battery down. So when, before I walk away from the trailer when I park it, it's just reach up there and turn it off. But again, by this guy being a, a push button, um, you know, if you got some younger juniors that are helping you get hooked up, you know, they can guide you back. You can just keep your foot on the brake and they can easily just reach up here and hit the button and drop it right onto the truck. So definitely a nice feature there, um, but that is definitely an awesome upgrade. We can always do it after the fact, but again, it, it makes it so much easier. And, and honestly, it's, it's a lot more cost effective if you go ahead and do it when we build, build your trailer or like in this instance right here. Now in this one here, charcoal metallic, 
that's a really popular option. It really works in today's color, uh, just choices with the new trucks. Uh, in direct light, it looks a lot more like charcoal, in my opinion. When you get it in the shade, <clears throat> it'll darken up a little bit. But I like it because it's not going to show dirt as much as like a black sheeted trailer will, uh, just because it does hide some of that. Now, we talked about the V nose, but Cimarron also builds an 8.2 long nose. So a lot of competitors will run a 7.6, 7.8 long nose. Well, where that comes into play is multiple reasons. One, when you drop your tailgate a long box on those shorter trailers, we potentially can get into that actual uh, hydraulic jack cover. <clears throat> and a long box on a Cimarron, you can actually walk behind here with that tailgate down. So it gives you ability um, just to have that little bit of buffer, but then also work between the trailer as well. Uh, the other thing is, is the drop wall. So this one here is set at a 53 inch gooseneck drop wall height, standards 50. But what's happened with Fords and Rams, last few years, really tall truck beds, GM changed their body style two and a half inches higher. So we really have, try to put a lot of focus on bed clearance making trailers running level we always want that you've paid for two axles let's make sure the trailers are running that for equal weight distribution but also having bed clearance on these real expensive trucks nobody wants to tear up a bed if you're running a flat bed no problem we can build you one 50 inches you can have a little bit more storage if you want but on these instances here you know 53 is nice we can adjust that coupler make sure the trailers running level and have that bed clearance not only that with that eight too long nose, you're actually gonna get more storage compared to those others. So now let's transition into this dirty tack. You've heard me mention it a couple times. This is the thought process behind this. As you can see, we have a side ramp going into this stock area here. Normally, this escape door is gonna be on driver's side. Well, we flipped it over here to passenger side, shifted the ramp back, and then put that escape door on the passenger side. So what we can do is we can utilize this trailer for 24 foot of stall space if we want. If you're hauling a couple show calves, you wanna have some equipment, your upright box, your blower carts, your fan carts, anything like that, portable generator, we can utilize the ramp to load those rather than lifting them up into the trailer. And I'll show you here in a minute, we'll use our traveling gate. You can potentially use that as a tack wall. So that's where you get your dirty tack. So it's not a solid wall. We're actually just using that, that front, uh, uh, or this traveling gate on this one to use that front compartment for storage. So six foot off the gooseneck drop walls where we set the side ramp. But boy, these are nice to be able to walk calves up and off of the trailer and just bringing us into the stall area. So right now I've got the traveling gate set up against the partition, or the, excuse me, the drop wall itself. And the reason why is now I can utilize this as one large stall space if I want, I can get that out of the way, or I can actually utilize it to create two stalls in this setup. Or again, utilizing it for a tack wall. So we have a couple different positions between that door and the ramp that I can actually lock this into. So I can change the sizes of that front if I want. Again, I can just slide it right by the right ahead of the, the ramp itself, or we can roll this guy back. Now it's as you can see, it's it's uh, notched as we get into the wheel wells. So if I wanted to get it back here into this area, it still functions and flows back here. But as you can see, as long as I got it kind of in the middle and balanced, it is so simple to move these traveling gates that Cimarron's designed because it runs off this top rail. And again, we built it up off the floor a little bit. So if we bed really deep, it's really easy to manipulate and move where we need to. As long as you're in the middle and balanced, your gates in the shut position, very easy to move. Again, younger juniors can move these gates in that instance um, if they need to. Now, on this one here, we did a 42 inch wide swing gate, no threshold, so cattle don't have to step over anything. Um, if you're used to more, you know, your standard stock trailers where we're actually gonna have a fixed gate, normally they're, they're hinged off a passenger side and swing the other way. Well, on these type of loads, 
you know, we're loading off, unloading off the side of the trailer. So we flip the way the hinges are. It just allows cattle walking in and off this trailer so much easier by having this gate hinged over on driver's side in this instance. But different options you can do on these traveling gates. This one here is the 48 inch swing. Uh, there's a slider option on a couple of other, uh, our big air ride trailers that we have are 30 footers that we keep in inventory. Those we're actually doing jail bars. So kind of an airflow style rather than this stock, you know, two, two air gap setup. So there's a lot of different versions we can do on these. Look, if you want to hinge back the other way, that's not a problem. The other thing is, is we ran this rail just a couple feet off the back of the trailer. So if you wanted to add a second traveling gate, the rail's already there, all the posts are there. So just, you, you don't just have to look where these notches are. I can actually set these gates on these posts as well. The only reason we have the notches is when we have the larger tube for wheel wells or frames around like the ramp and actually the door itself. So these guys are awesome to be able to manipulate stall sizes. Maybe you have, you know, some pairs that you have. Maybe you want to separate the calves. Maybe you have a heifer. Maybe you're dragging a bull. You want to keep them separated. Rather than waste in one big space, we can then move that gate where we want it to um, and really make this trailer a little bit more versatile from that standpoint. Now, up here at the drop wall, we've got the fold down calf gate. That's a 16 incher, nice and solid, but there's a good look at the inside of that V nose gooseneck itself. Again, with the width and the depth, you actually get quite a bit of storage even, even with this. Imagine if it went to an abrupt point, you're just gonna lose this angle really changes and you're gonna you know, reduce quite a bit of your storage space. Over on the right hand side is gonna be a storage tray. That's gonna be for our plexiglass that I'll show you when, when we get to the outside. Now again, this one's built with the one gate. So there's just one position to lock a gate in. So if you added a second one, you don't have the capability to actually set that ahead of that uh, escape door. But more than likely, if you're adding a second gate to this trailer, you know, you're gonna, for the most part, be using one of them kind of at all times. And then again, you can kind of determine, hey, I want another 48 inch swing. I want a slider. Um, you know, we can change a, a lot of those uh, configurations around for you. Two way roof vents. We put a few of these guys in here just to create a little bit more airflow. If you do have the plexiglass in. So again, we can manipulate that airflow. Insulated roof. This is standard on every single Cimarron. So, Yes, this is a low profile trailer. Well, here's a little background and story on why we're building these a little bit shorter is one, we don't have the, the drag. We don't need that extra height that we need in some of the horse trailers. But when Kirk Steerwalt got involved with Cimarron creating the Steerwalt model, um, which a lot of these show trailers are kind of based off of. And this one, we, we took a lot of the options over from a Steerwalt over to this Lone Star model. But his first one was six, eight tall. Well, we needed to get the heat away from cattle and once he started realizing that the, how well this insulated roof worked, we didn't need that extra height. So we'd actually go down to the 6'4 height on these guys. But it'll keep your stall area about 20% cooler than aluminum sheeted roof. So massive difference, especially in the summertime, traveling with these insulated roofs. These guys are really stout too. I can walk on these roofs and uh, I won't dent them. 150 pounds per square foot, take substantial hail. Not to say big hail can't do damage, but um, it's got to be pretty significant. Uh, we've had hailstorms here. Aluminum sheeted roof trailers have been damaged. Cimarron's haven't because of that insulated roof. But boy, traveling in the summer months, it makes a big difference there. So again, we can kind of manipulate airflow by the air gaps. But in this instance here, if I want to tie a calf up, I don't have this post to get around with the plexiglass. So you have a tie rail between the two air gaps and then a lower one as well. So when you're traveling, you want to tie a calf down, give them the uh, ability to lay down, you've got that. Or if you're in here, um, maybe you're showing off the trailer, you, just, you got somebody ready or waiting to go back for a division or something like that, you can go in and, and just tie them up and keep their head up there. But nice to have those tie rails on that side. Flip to the floor, you're gonna have rubber mats on this one. Uh, but underneath here is the industry's best floor. So you're standing on support beams every four inches. So those are those beams that run across the trailer the full length. Wherever you have a calf standing on this floor, they're standing on a support beam. So that, in my opinion, is the easiest way to tell quality of an all aluminum trailer. 
get underneath, look at the floor. You start seeing those I-beams spread farther apart. You're just not, it's not the quality of trailer that um, you'll see in like, you know, a Cimarron. So that definitely makes a big difference there. Good, nice and stout. Um, even on the wheel wells, you know, on this one here, we tapered wheel wells. So we don't have these 90 degree angles, we taper it up. And even at the back there, you'll notice there's not that 90 degree corner there. We've actually tapered that as well. We've been doing that again on our steer waltz. That is now a standard option on those, but we like to taper these guys. Uh, just making everything nice and smooth uh, for the cattle, keeping everything nice and safe. Then in here, you got some LED lights. You got three of these. So depending on where you move that gate, you're going to have some of that LED coverage. Those are the big OptiBright lights. They put out a lot of light coverage and um, you know, it's definitely nice to have those, especially when you're getting home late at night, getting unfamiliar places. Speaking of, as you come out of the side ramp, you're going to notice that that uh, 16 inch awning light kind of splitting this kind of quote unquote front tack door, that dirty tack setup, and then your side ramp. These guys here have a, uh, the capability to lock these with a key so I can lock these. It's the same as the battery box, same as the side ramp. On the back gate, you'd actually have to use a padlock, I'll show you. Uh, but on these side ramps, Cimarron does a really good job using these big springs. As you can see, it kind of gets to a certain point and actually wants to suck into the trailer. But, you know, for, for younger juniors, they've got the capability to lift these ramps up. Not a man killer by any means because of those big springs. But again, then I can lock this side ramp if need be. You're gonna have the charcoal metallic that's gonna match the nose of it. On your exterior, you're gonna have high and low tie rails as well. Maybe you're tying calves out off the trailer, um, tying them up if you're working off the trailer itself, you got that. And then you're gonna have the plexiglass. So the track is built into every Lone Star model. So even if even if there's a Cimarron that doesn't have this plexiglass, we can go ahead and add it because it's got that track. So again, I can take this plexiglass out. You saw the storage tray up in the nose. Here's a piece of advice. Take out passenger lower first, tape them together with like a masking tape, painter's tape, write it on there as Sharpie, anything, put passenger lower, then do passenger upper, then do drivers, same thing. But when you go to put these back in, it saves you so much time and hassle you know exactly where those pieces of plexiglass go. Now it's a real simple puzzle, then a very difficult puzzle where you gotta figure out where everything goes. You're gonna be mixing them up because there's different lengths because of, we have a side ramp, we have an escape door, you know, we have notches in this little area, notches in the gate. So there's different sizes and different pieces where they go. Again, it'll save a lot of time and hassle if you know exactly where they're going. So we have two 7,000 pound Dexter rubber torsion axles on this guy here, electric brakes, 16 inch aluminum wheels. We did the black and silver, ties in really well with this color setup with the charcoal, the, the smoked plexiglass, the mill finish extrusion, uh, but a good look to this. And then we upgraded from a 10 ply tire to a 14 ply tire. So a lot heavier duty tire, on, on this setup here uh, by going with that. It's just so much simpler to just upgrade to those heavier duty tires when we're building them. Um, and then down the road, I mean, it's 24 by eight. So, you know, you can put quite a bit of weight on this. Might as well have just a heavier duty tire on them to begin with. <clears throat> All right, back gate here. It is a swing with a slider. So I've got the slider open. This one here, since it's eight wide, we've got a, a wider trailer to work with. So this opening here is 36 inches. This allows everything to get out of the opening here. So if we're ever button up against another trailer in a parking lot, an alleyway, you're taking a big bread heifer off, big fat steer, anything like that, it's a wider opening um, than standard. Normally it's about 32 inches. So four inches, yeah, it does make a, a difference. So. It's nice to have that. This guy's also on a, the ability to slam it and lock it, and then a pin through there as well. And then I can work into the actual swing. So again, if you're loading 
on and off this. You've again got that versatility to where that you could use this as a ranch trailer, but then also haul it to town and go to some of those shows. All of our switches for our lights are right back here. They're all individual. So I can turn on the sides, the interior and the rear. So you've got two eight inch awnings up at the top right here. We also equip this one with backup lights. You're gonna get in unfamiliar places. It's nice to have that, throw it in reverse, get a lot of light coverage back there. Our backup lights on our truck are a long ways away. On this setup as well, you got a bigger, thicker bumper. For a long time, we used the standard bumper uh, that we'd use on horse trailers. Well, we don't have all this hardware that we do on those because of the slider in the gate and in these instances where we might be backing up against another trailer bouncing something across, it's nice to have that larger bumper, which this one does have. On driver's side, you're gonna have another 16 inch awning light, kind of splitting length of the trailer. Again, plexiglass. We put a few more marker lights on this one. Typically on this one, two is standard. You're gonna have your red at the back and your amber at the front, that's DOT but we put a few more on here. Uh, we've had some customers go and put lights every foot. I mean, you can, you can get to where it's that close and really make it look like a nice chicken hauler. Tie rails high and low on this one again, on this side. So again, if you're tying off of this trailer, you've got that capability there. There is a, a piece that we could add that actually goes over the wheel wells if you wanted additional tie rail. Uh, maybe you're traveling in the summer months you're gonna use this so you're maybe at a junior national, something like that, to where, again, you want that tie rail down low and you're tying everybody off side of the trailer. There's a piece that can actually go over the wheel wells. And again, you can have a little bit more tie rail there. I think that about covers it on this guy. I'm gonna give you the stock number for reference on it. Again, it's a 2024 Cimarron Lone Star, 24 foot, dirty tack setup. That stock number is five in. 231717. We do take trade ins. So if you're looking to upgrade, downsize, we can help you out there. Uh, if we want to build something, we can help you out. We've got a 28 foot version sitting here as well. It's got two traveling gates, but again, that dirty tack setup. Uh, so we've got them in some different sizes, uh, different sizes, excuse me. Um, financing is available and delivery is potentially an option. So we could bring it right to your doorstep. So give us a call. Anybody on that sales team can help you out. That number is 303-684-3400. We appreciate you tuning in. Have a good day.